I'm really excited about this one and it's free pattern time. And welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. We are continuing the holiday sew along. I'm getting into the Christmas spirit here with my jammies. Remember these from last year? Plus, I put my Christmas tree up in September. I might be crazy, but that's okay. If you have your holiday sew along kit already, you'll have a fat quarter bundle of extra fabric that comes with three prints from the Peppermint Collection by Dana Willard for Figo Fabrics. And we're doing some additional projects that you can make with these super cute prints. So I'm introducing the tiny boxy pouch. And yes, there is a free pattern. Towards the end of the video, I'll be sharing how you can download this, but let's get right into the step-by-step -step tutorial. Here's what you need. The biggest pieces of fabric required are five by seven inches for the main and lining parts, a complementing piece for the tab, two and a half inches by three inches, and a zipper at least five inches long. Print and cut out the free template. You'll need to cut two out of the main fabric and two of the lining fabric. I did interface the main pieces with Pellon Shape Flex SF101 before tracing and cutting them out. Many of the supplies featured in this video are available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. With the zipper facing up and the pull on the left, place one of the main pieces right side down, lining up the edges. Because the zipper is longer than the edge itself, I can keep it zipped shut for now. You can use pins, clips, or even fabric glue to hold it in place. Now place a lining piece face up underneath the zipper, matching up the ends. You'll have kind of a sandwich. The majority of this project will be sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance unless otherwise specified. Here are the settings on my sewing machine. I'm on stitch zero with a 2.5 stitch length and needle position at 3.0. If you line up the edge of your fabric with the inner metal guide on the right side of the walking foot, it produces a quarter inch seam. Sew both fabric pieces to the zipper tape, back stitching at the beginning and end. If you're here and you don't know anything about sewing, I encourage you to watch my Learn to Sew series featuring the Brother CS7000i to nail down the basics particularly the video about basic stitches. You do want to be mindful of your thread choice here. This is 50 weight cotton thread in white. Choose a thread color that coordinates with the fabric. With an iron, press open both sides away from the zipper teeth. There are quite a few mini irons available that will make pressing small projects easier. The fabric pieces ideally should match up with each other. Here's the next sewing machine settings for top stitching the fabric. It's a little shy of a quarter inch and I lengthened the stitch to 3.0. Again, I lined up the edge with the inner metal guide on the right. You don't really need to back stitch here because this is more for decorative purposes. Repeat the last two steps for the other side of the zipper. When you're placing the fabric, main fabric should be right sides together as well as the lining fabrics. I also use the already sewn side as a guide for placement. The ends should all closely match up. We're taking a quick detour to prep the side tab. Fold the fabric in half on the long side and press. Unfold and press both sides into the center. I made the first bag with the two and a half inch by three inch piece, but if you prefer a slightly shorter tab, a two and a half inch square would look good too. Glue basting in place is way easier than pinning. Elmer's washable school glue is perfect for basting because it washes out. I run a thin line of glue and then hit it with a dry iron. Back at the sewing machine, we're edge stitching the tab piece all the way around, about an eighth of an inch with a 3.0 stitch length. I forgot to film this part, but you'll then fold the tab in half and tack a few more stitches to keep it together. Still at the sewing machine, if you're using a longer zipper, now is the chance to create start and stopping points. We're using stitch number four, a zigzag. Be sure the zipper pull is in between the ends. Sew a few stitches forward and back right at the edges of the fabric. Mm -hmm. 
In hindsight, my stitching went a little too far into the zipper, but for next time, I'll keep it farther out. In the center of what will be the front left side of the pouch, stitch down the folded tab with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It should be the side the zipper pull is on when it's closed. The raw edges will all match up and the fold is facing inward. Starting the construction, place the main and lining fabrics right sides together. You'll be sewing all the sides, leaving the cutout corners open. Clip or pin in order to hold together, but mark about two and a half inches in the center of the lining's bottom edge for turning later. You won't be sewing the section and having that visual reminder will really help. Again, here are my sewing machine settings for a quarter inch seam allowance. Stitch down the sides and bottom of the main fabrics, backstitch at all of the start and stopping points. Repeat with the lining, but don't forget to leave an opening at the bottom. Here's how I press the seams open. Laying out flat, I take the mini iron and I use the tip to separate the seam allowance. Then I flip each piece over and repeat on the other side. At this point, you can trim off any excess zipper tape. I ended up doing this twice on the first bag because I didn't sew zipper stops on it. Pinch out all four bottom corners to create the boxed portion. You'll want to try and line up the seam lines on both sides as best you can. Instead of using clips on the lining, I glue basted the opening by running a thin line of glue right near the raw edge. For the main fabrics, I only used clips because with the interfacing, it's quite a bit thicker. Sew the bottom corners using a quarter inch seam allowance and back stitching at both ends. For the top corners, we'll actually be doing these differently by pinching both the main and lining sides and sewing them together with the zipper in the center. I did my best to center the seams and zipper teeth and clipped the layers to hold them. Be sure the zipper is at least halfway open, otherwise you won't be able to turn the bag right side out. Sew the top corners using a quarter inch seam allowance and back stitching at both ends. Because the seams are pressed open, I went slowly and carefully so they didn't get accidentally flipped to one side or the other. Remember that opening in the lining? Start pulling out the main piece gently through that opening. Turn the entire project right side out. Tuck in the raw edges of the opening in the lining and press. Glue basting this little section is so much easier than pinning. 
Back at the sewing machine, edge stitch that section closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Back stitching at the beginning and end. You'll probably want to use a thread that blends into whatever your lining fabric is. Tuck the lining into the bag and it's important to press each sewing project. I misted the fabric with a spray bottle to get out the wrinkles from turning and then meticulously pressed each side with the iron, particularly each corner's edge to really give it that boxy shape. So far I have made two boxy pouches, but there's definitely more on the way because this is the perfect scrappy project. You don't need really big pieces of fabric. So I have tons of scraps laying around that are the perfect size for the boxy pouch. And another thing you could do is easily add on a D-ring or other hardware if you wanna make this like a keychain or other item. Plus you can fit gift cards into the boxy pouch or other little trinkets great for stocking stuffers. It's a form of reusable gift wrap so we can be a little more sustainable. And if you end up making this, let me know. I'd love to see your photos on Instagram. Tag me, hashtag sewing report squad so I can see all of your boxy pouches. And definitely stay tuned because there are going to be more holiday sew along projects. On the way, I'm gonna try to do as many as I can before Christmas gets here. Oh yes, and how do you get this free template? You have to go to sewingreport.com and then there will be a blog post for the boxy pouch. Click on the blog post and then in the body of the post, there will be a download link. So that is where you can get it. Make sure to print it out at 100%. And there's a little one inch square so you can use your quilting ruler to make sure that it all measures up. But that's how you can get your free template. And a quick word from our sponsor, The Sewing Report Etsy Shop. If you haven't gotten a holiday sewing kit yet, but you'd like one, head over there right now and there are still some available if the listing is still there. It's kind of on a limited case basis. I'm making more as the orders come in and when they're gone, they're gone. They are $29 plus shipping within the US, but my shop offers free shipping on orders $35 and up. Plus, I'll tell you this, any order now over $60, so $60 or more, I'm going to throw in a little surprise gift for all of the Sewing Report customers, but I really appreciate everyone who's already purchased a holiday kit. I really am so, so excited to sew with you guys this holiday season. And be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm Jen with the Sewing Report, and remember, whatever you're doing, make sure it's fun.